Hi, my name is Eric, and this is Compromise, a Kirie Elite, 37 foot. And I just bought this boat, uh, so I thought I would make a quick video to show you around and explain all the subsystems. Cheers! So let's take a look at the nav station and the electrical panel. So first we have the base station for the remote of the autopilot and the display of the autopilot here. We have a barometer. A, that's the secondary GPS unit. So the primary is on the main chart plotter in the cockpit. We have the VHF radio and the SSB radio which I think is really cool that I have. And it's connected to a Pactor modem. So that allows me to uh, send emails or download uh, grid files for the, the weather. Uh, once I'm very far from the shore, I can still um, connect remotely. And I've got my personal ham radio here, uh, which I brought on the boat. And this is a pretty standard electrical panel. Now if we go to the aft starboard section, we have the head with the sink, the head, here we have a little solar powered vent, port light, this is the compass unit that's visible from the cockpit, and this is the EPIRB, which is uh, for emergency. And the head has a little library here and uh, some compartment for storage here we see the control unit for the autopilot and this is the battery charger and here I've opened this for you you can see if I shine some light you can see here this is the exhaust and the shaft that goes from the engine to the propeller. Coming out of the head, if I turn to port, we have the galley, we have two sinks, um, this is the fresh water manual pump, the salt water manual pump which is not currently working, and the fresh water electrical pump. And here we have three through holes, one for the macerator pump, which is connected to the um, holding tank, the sinks, and the intake for the salt water that goes both to the head and to this um, unit here. And the selector for the fresh water. So this is the pump for the fresh water and it, so this is the intake for the pump so there's an intake from the port tank and the starboard tank right now both are selected on and this is the fresh water tap in the sink so if it goes so it would go like this to the sink uh, for the manual pump and otherwise it would go down here to the pump and here is the accumulator which helps with the pump um, not turn on and off continuously. And this is a compass, I believe. And these two are the um, manual bilge pumps. Right here, one is the bilge pump and one is the gray water pump. And here we have the cooler with a cooling head. Not that much food yet. This is the stove and the oven, which I don't think has ever been used. So in order to turn that, there's actually three cutoffs for the propane. There's one here, one at the propane head, and here controlled by a solenoid. All right, so now let's look at the aft cabin. 
if you get in the half cabin, there is a flashlight. This is the secondary cockpit compass. And a fan. A little bit of storage here. And here. But to be frank, I'll probably turn this cabin into a storage space uh, while I'm docked here. Unless I'm underway, in which case I don't want to use the, the V-Birth. Okay, so now I've removed all the cushions and the panels from the aft cabin to show you what's underneath. So first, there's some storage here in the drawer. There is a 1000 watt inverter here if you want to run AC from the batteries. And there's uh, two house batteries, one and two house batteries. And there's also additional space for two other house batteries for a total of four. But those are not currently in the boat. And this is another view uh, of the drivetrain that we saw from the head. And this hose here is a air intake hose from the engine compartment that's connected to a little fan and that takes any fumes that uh, are present in the engine compartments and pushes them out. Uh, So now we come to the salon. As you can see, the upholstery probably needs to be changed. I've got a bunch of samples from Cellrite to try to pick something that I like. And here there's some space for wine bottles, I guess. There's a compass unit here, I believe. And you can open this table. This is what it looks like with the table open. It's a pretty sizable table. There's a handrail here to hold yourself on the way. I've removed the saloon cushions to show you what's under here. There's a leak cloth here so that uh, when you're sleeping you can uh, not fall. And this here slides open, so it becomes a double berth. Now only one of these, these two people are gonna use the leak cloth. The other one is gonna fall. Here, you see the water heater. The water heater either takes hot water from the engine, or you can, use, you can power it with uh, 120 volt when you're ashore and plugged at the marina. These are the two bilge pumps and there's openings here. There's a true hall here. Under this, this is a water, the water tank. So we see the end of the water tank here. The other part is not accessible. And here we see the refrigeration, which can be powered either 120 volt or with the 12 volt battery. On this bulkhead we have this instrument which is the temperature and the hygrometer which is the humidity in the air, time, LED lights, all the lights are LED, and this flag from the Pacific Cup, the last time the previous owners did the Pacific Cup, so I'm going to give that back to them, I think they want it. Under this there's another 45 gallon of water and a little bit of storage. Here, this is where I put my books, and 
there's a little bit of storage here this used to be another head but they transformed it into kind of a storage unit and this is the enlarged V berth with a new mattress which I like and that's pretty much it for the below deck tour uh, there's the engine ob obviously that I'll have to show you some other time it's under the stairs Here we see the main chart plotter, which is connected to radar, AIS, and GPS. And I can control from this little remote here, and also from my watch, but I haven't figured that yet. And um, here we have little solar panels. We've got two of them, on, one on each side, but I'll probably add more uh, on, the, on the Dodger eventually. So this is the Dodger here. Uh, in terms of sales, I've got a pretty extensive sale inventory. I have a main sale from North Sales and multiple sales from Pineapple Sales, including a 80% jib with 7.5 ounce cloth that refers to the stiffness of the cloth, a 105% jib, a 125% jib, all with the same cloth, a asymmetrical spinnaker with three quarter ounce cloth, a symmetrical spinnaker with three quarter ounce cloth, and a sp symmetrical spinnaker with one and a half ounce cloth. And finally, I have a storm trisail in case of bad weather. Here we see the sailing instruments, um, the log, so the speed, the wind, and the depth. Here I can uh, tension the stay, as you can see. I've got a hydraulic uh, stay tensioner for the back stay. I have the SSB antenna on the back stay here. You see the isolator here. And uh, this is the radar unit and the primary GPS sensor. And here's the secondary GPS sensor by the solar panel. Here we can see the boom vang is tensioned by this um, carbon steel, very high tensile strength rope. Four deck has a baby stay here, which unfortunately reduces the usable size of the deck, um, and so you would remove it when you're flying a spinnaker when you're downwind. But when you're upwind, um, it's necessary. Um, here we can see the spinnaker pole. This is the aluminum spinnaker pole. I also have a um, carbon fiber one, which I'll use when I'm more comfortable with this one, so that I don't break it. In the front, there's a manual windlass and furling jib here. As you can see, the rudder is very, very large. Um, it used to have this boat used to have a wheel, but the previous owners removed it. Um, and I, I kind of like this because you can you can pull pull it up like this and make more space on deck. But uh, it is very, very large, um, so. It would hit people who are standing here. 
And the reason it's so large is because there's a lot of force when you're going backwards. Now let's look in the seat lockers. Here's uh, somewhere to put chain, diesel, cleaning products. These are the spinnaker lines. And this is here the, the shore power unit and the galvanic isolator here on the right. And the port so cockpit locker is where I keep my mooring lines and my spearfishing equipment as you can see here. And this is the propane uh, compartment. Now we're looking at the lazarette. This is the shaft for the autopilot. And this is where I keep my tools in waterproof boxes. And on the right here you can see the antenna tuner for the SSB. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching.